Hiroshi Merriman's office. Just a moment. I'm sorry, her line is busy. Just be seated, please. Thank you. Good morning, Pushy Merriman's office. I'll connect you with Miss Wilkins. Yes? Judge Swarthmore on the phone. Is that Sona? Put him on. Good morning, Judge Swarthmore. This is a pleasant surprise. You're not suggesting settlement out of court, are you, Judge? No. We're prepared to prove that our client was your client's common-law wife and is entitled to our full dire rights. Yes, I know the trial will mean a lot of unpleasant publicity for the family. Okay, Judge Swarthmore, you think it over. That's what those ethical mugs call blackmail. And what do they call what those rich and respectable Van Blascombs are trying to do to that poor kid? I'll make them pay through the nose for the fun they've had. That pains me so much. It's high time for the man to pay and pay and pay. The Queen Mary is past quarantine. Skip the Queen Mary. There's nothing on that ship for you. Let sleeping dogs lie. They've lain quiet for so long. Surely I have a right to look at them now. No, you haven't. You signed away your rights, so forget about it. That uh, chorus girl's waiting outside? I'll see those two decks first. All right, boys. Thanks. Morning, boys. Good morning. The Queen Mary docks at Pier 45 at noon today. Condoms are aboard. I want you to cover them. The condoms? Quiet. They're dynamite. If you're scared, I can always get some other boys. Who's that scared? Me. Quiet. What do we do? Talk to the stewards, the bar boys, the purser. And uh, I'd like to get some pictures of the grandson, Richard Condon. Leave it to us. Not me. Us. Us. On your way, boys. Uh, yes, Mr. Condon. And notify my office I'll be at home the rest of the day. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Condon. You never told me, Father. New York's marvelous. Your grandfather's wanted it kept a secret, my boy. Well, lad, here it is. Condon throne room. Will the heir apparent please be enormously impressed? I am, Grandfather. The English system of training young men for statesmanship is far superior to ours. Statesmanship? But we publish newspapers. Exactly. And the man who writes the country's news rules that country. The power of the press has made all that your grandfather's backyard. Condon Paper Mill, New York Dispatch, Philadelphia Times, Condon Ink Company, Pittsburgh Inquirer. Grandfather, all that's yours. Ours, lad, ours. Well, sir, it takes your breath away. Coast to coast, these newspapers make the opinion of America, for the good of America. We make men, and we break them if necessary. You're the caliber to take over someday. Gives you a sense of power, eh, lad? Frightens me, sir. Just never let men flatter you, or women involve you. Yield to that muck and you'll sink into a swamp of failure. Your father gladly serves as a horrible example. He abdicated because of a woman. Mr. Condon, that Cerruti gang's been convicted. Good, we'll make it a national event. Call Washington. National desk. Washington. Watson. Feature Cerruti gang conviction is a victory for American homes and womanhood. Give play to Special Prosecutor Dan Foster. Hold on. Get me Judge Swarthmore. Get statements from a priest, clergyman, Judge and rabbi. Swarthmore. Judge Swarthmore? Just a minute. Swarthmore, arrange a testimonial victory ball for Dan Foster at the Waldorf tonight. Yes, tonight, while the whole town's talking. I'll wait. It can be done. Make every district leader responsible for ten guests. Reserve a plane for our Washington publisher. We never stop for tea over here. And you're never bored, I'm certain. It's a sensational tip, Chief. That rule stands. Portia Merriman's name is never mentioned in any of our papers. Did I hear you say Portia Merriman, Father? You didn't. Thank you so much. They've got Foster for you. Hello, Dan. Congratulations. Just heard the good news. I never would have gotten a conviction if you hadn't persuaded those girls to testify. Even ladies of the evening make good witnesses when they're not afraid to talk. But remember, 
I don't want to find any of my witnesses in fur-lined ditches. I promised you they'd get full protection, and they will. Now, how about a little celebration this evening? Mr. Foster, Mr. Condon on number two. Please, won't you? Fine. Call for me at 7.30. Bye. Are you stuck on that Puritan roundhead? How bad have you got it? Badly enough to want to protect him from a mess called Portia Merriman. That's fine. You're certainly going about it the right way. Well, boys? They never got to the dock. They land on a press boat in quarantine. But we get the dope just the same. Even the pictures. Oh. Got them from the ship's photographer. Nice looking kid, too. Even if he is a limey. But his father, this old Condon, is an old good guy. What? He's damn crazy. Brought a little English girl over with him. With his son? Oh, no. Too smart for that. Hit her out in second class. Can you imagine old man Condon's blood pressure if he knew? Anyhow, she's the angle to work on. Her name's Elizabeth Manis. She's stopping at the Oral Apartments. Say, you don't think this Manis' name is the boy's mother, do you? Wow, would that be something? I'll say it would. That would make her about ten years old when the boy was born. Well, maybe she's an English hillbilly. Quiet. Didn't the store tell us a kid's mother died when he was born? So that's what they told the boy. That's what the boy told the steward. Mr. Daniel Foster's downstairs, madame. Ask him to come up, will you? Yes, madame. But we don't get it. Who are we supposed to gun for, the old man, oil condon, or the kid? I want a daily report on the boy. But he's all right. He won't get in no trouble for three or four years yet. Maybe that's just what I want to know. Stay with it, boys. Yeah. Until we catch somebody doing something. If they don't catch us first, quiet. and things. Sorry. You should be. It's a woman's prerogative to keep a man waiting. Or are you demanding equal rights for men? Come on, let's go. A little on edge tonight, aren't you? I am not. Suppose you take it out on me now so that we can enjoy the rest of the evening. Oh, for heaven's sake, Dan, don't be so humble. All right. Suppose I denounce you a little. You've been wanting to do that for a long time, Daniel. It's the Puritan in you. Get it off your chest. You'll feel a lot better. You seem to be a frustrated, mentally snarled woman, Portia Merriman. How am I doing? Oh, fine. I'm waiting for the next count in the indictment. Count two. You are sacrificing all your beauty and brilliance and charm to a cockeyed notion that all men are rotten. All but you, Dan. You are my knight in shining armor. Devoted to my lady Lloyd. Specialist in heart bomb suits, alimony gouges, alienation shakedown. Which racket she glorifies as a crusade for downtrodden womanhood. I won't have them calling you queen of the shysters. Just because you think a woman in a man's world is entitled even to the dirty grace. He makes love from a soapbox. After very careful study, I've come to the conclusion that what you should be is a wife and mother. How about it? Oh, Dan, I wish I... No. I've got to work it out my own way. Where are we going? Oh, I almost forgot. The victory ball John Condon is throwing for me. You're not taking me. I certainly am. Condon really should be giving the party for you. You dug up the evidence that convicted that gang. Good night, Foster. What do you mean, good night? A good good night. You're going with me, Merriman. I'm not, Foster. Nobody's going to intimidate me. Oh, who's intimidating who? Are you afraid of John Condon? I'm not going to have you commit political suicide on my account. You're going to be a demonstration of the political independence of Daniel Foster. You run along to your party. You'll go places with John Condon. I'm strictly bad news. Merriman. East the Demon Sleuth just mailed these pictures down from Harvard. The boys can't take that atmosphere of higher education. They're going nuts. your fingers. What's on the fire? 
Tell him Dubois' breach of promise, the Maxi killing. Rogers versus Rogers. You burn your fingers. All right. Father Cassocks and the mother of the Gano boy are on deck. He's due to fry in the morning. They uh, want you to pull the sob stuff at the governor's mansion tonight and win him a commutation. He hasn't got a chance, and the mother hasn't got a cent. Why should I see them? That's what I say. Tell them to go home. That's just what I was going to do. This way, Father. Thank you. Good afternoon, Father. Joe Gano. My boy. Killed a man in a hold-up. The older boys shot him. He was only along. The older men have already paid with their lives. If you will speak for my Joe. He's so young to die. We are all responsible for Joe's sins. What do we expect if we neglect our young? You're right, Father. I'll do the best I can. Thank you. We must hurry, Mrs. Gano. There's a train to Albany. I've made a plane reservation for Miss Merriman. I'll meet you there, Father. Yes, Mary. Put him on. Well, what happened? Well, what's wrong with him? What's the trouble? Well, why didn't you find out, you dumb cluck? What is it? Well, you know how excitable Eve is. It's nothing. Richard? Oh, you know how the rich fly off the handle? One of the kids gets a tummy ache and then they order out the Red Cross. Tell me. They've had to bring Richard down from school in an ambulance. Push it. Dr. Jenks is sending for a brain specialist. Thank you. What happened to Richard? What is it? What are you doing here? What's wrong with my boy? You've no right to... Father. Paula Reynolds. Should we go to your study, Father? What did the doctor say? Probably a basal fracture of the skull. Oh. oh, but Richard's young and strong. That baby's almost a six-footer now. Take me to him. I won't allow it. Can't it be civilized, Father? After all, she is the boy's mother. That boy believes his mother is dead. And you and I know it's better that way. Do you think I'd go in there and do anything to upset my boy? I left him here just a baby. He's still there to me. It's the only way I've ever known him. My baby is sick. Oh, it's a strange feeling. The three of us in this room again. As if the years had never come between us. You didn't want Richard then. Now you're afraid I might take him from you. Can't you understand I'd be the last one in the world to say anything? Yes? Mr. Conan, this is Dr. Thorndyke. How do you do? Have you seen the boy? Yes. At this time, all we can do is watch him. I must ask that even his family keep out of the room. Please, Doctor. May I look in through the open door? Just for one moment. Just a glance, of course. I promise. Gano's life. That was his crime. Or was it perhaps our crime? That Joe never had a chance to be anything but a gunman's stooge. Growing up as he did on the garbage heap of neglected childhood. We could very properly go to Joe Gano in the death house and beg his forgiveness for the things we failed to do for him. 
All those things we so gladly do for our own children. If this boy lay dying of some ghastly accident, what wouldn't we do for him? In just a few hours, little Joe will be dead. And again, the immortal voice will be heard, reproaching the conscience of mankind. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> Joe Gano. Good news, kid. You mean? He's been commuted to life imprisonment. why your father asked you to bring me here tonight. Come on, tell me. Well, this puts me in an awkward position. Then I'm going to ask you an embarrassing question. What would you say to the idea of me as a stepmother? What? You, Miss Manners? Don't pretend. Your father did tell you. Yes, and I think it's wonderful. Do you, Richard? Of course, if you love each other. I can't think of anything I would like better. Shall we, Mother? <laughs> Boys, scram. Marilyn. Foster. I think that this is a planned surprise. And explains your many courteous refusals to answer my numerous telephone calls. Marilyn, you're not even listening to me. Don't you know I'm supposed to be the guest of honor here? Yes. Please go away. Are you sending me away from my own party? A district attorney running for re-election on a reform ticket can hardly afford to be seen in public with a notorious criminal lawyer. Yes, and what's more to the point, I'm going to be elected. You don't expect me to pull my punches, do you? Oh, no, my dear Puritan father. You'll be even tougher on me just because you love me. You're the most exasperating female oh, I have, Mr. Foster. May I present Major Greenwood at the British Embassy? How do you do, Mr. Foster? The Major's first visit to America. Earl. Excuse me? Sure. Now what? That woman with Richard. Well, that's the woman you brought over from England. Yes. I don't like my grandson meeting... Now, just a minute, Father. That happens to be the young lady that I'm going to marry. You suffer from a marriage mania. I never disappoint you, do I? Good evening. Perhaps I can help you if you're looking for someone. He's there. He's come around beautiful, no worse for the accident. He does look well. Wouldn't you like to meet him? Oh, I'd love to. Richard. Miss Merriman, may I present Miss Manners? How do you do? How do you do? And my son. Richard, how do you do? So glad. I didn't expect your son to be an Englishman. Oh, but I'm practically Americanized already. <laughs> well, perhaps you don't know, Miss Merriman, but uh, Richard was born in America. Right here in New York, as a matter of fact. Will you dance? I'd love to. Excuse me. You know, Eve, I get it all figured out. So have I. Quiet. The man has been sakes down Earl Connor for breach of promise. And Miriam handles the case. She's grooming a kid right now to be star witness against his old man, only he don't know it. Old John Condon pays off, and Dan Foster's in on the cut. You know, Hank, we got something there. So we stop the cocktails. Aren't you a little young to drink? Why, I'll be 18 in a fortnight. You're still growing. I say, don't treat me like a child. <laughs> I won't. You're a man, Richard. I, I may call you Richard. 
Van Hoff? Please. And may I? Oh, of course. Portia. Fine, Portia. Uh -huh. We're pals. Still up, Father? Did you see Miss Merriman safely home? Yes, charming lady. The thought that brings a chap out of himself. Yes. Showed an interest in you, did she? Let me talk and talk. You know, I feel very strange tonight. <coughs> serious. You can't be serious. Do you mind if I say that your father's been a weakling and a waster? I won't allow it. All my life I've been escaping from your grandfather's superiority. I took an allowance and quit. Never take another man's money for your own freedom. Why, George, you are serious. Great man, John Condon. With a God complex. You want to make you over in his image. Bad business when a man tries it. <laughs> How do you suppose I ever got myself to say all this to you? I usually enjoy what weaklings always enjoy. Seeing the other fellow suffer what he suffered. Oh, Father, you're terribly unkind to yourself. Strangely enough, this brings us to Miss Merriman. I don't understand. You will. Why, is she anything to us? As one civilized man to another, you'll agree that there's always a mother to start with. Miss? Yes. Your mother. Take my word for it, this must remain an absolute secret between us. Don't ask me why. I can only tell you that it would hurt your mother. Dreadfully, if it were known. It's a strange feeling. Someone you think dead comes to life. I can't, I, I can't explain the impulse to tell you. Perhaps the hope that someday the son will make it up to her for the father. I think that's why I told you. It's Richard. Have you forgotten? Oh, of course. Well, have a seat, Richard. Is there something I can do for you? I've been trying to think of something to sue by. I have it. I wish to sue for your friendship. You aren't annoyed. Oh, no, but... Portia, ever since our wonderful talk, well, I... I've missed you. You, uh... Will you see me every once in a while? I'm afraid I'm a very busy woman. Not going to put me out. Sorry, but... If I've been too presumptuous... Oh, no. Then how about dining with me? Tonight. This time I'll let you talk. <clears throat> Did you ring, Miss Merriman? Uh, yes. Call Ellen and tell her that Mr. Condon is coming for dinner tonight. You are a very gracious lady. Good afternoon. See you about seven-ish. Oh, make it as early-ish as you like, old fellow. Stick this, then. Well, if he isn't a darn hand-kissing foreigner. Good evening, dear father. Good evening. Boy, what's sour the milk of human kindness tonight? That's a lot, Father, you wake the house. If you're on your way to see that sweet little thing... Oh, thank you for reminding me. I have to take her to supper at midnight. You needn't bother. She's left the country for good. What's that? They've started their back for England. What are you talking about? The immigration officials picked her up. Undesirable alien, moral turpitude. Did you have that done? Up to your old tricks again. I warned you. Beg pardon, sir. Mr. Earl is wanted on the telephone. The private wire, sir. Hello. Oh, hello, Elizabeth. Why, I thought... No, I'm still here, Earl. 
Thought you might like to know. Yes, I'm home. Daniel and Prince, you make a wonderful cook. Oh, thank you. But where's the sawdust? Now he wants a floor show. You are a spoiled brat. It'll take a lot of spoiling to make up for all the times I've missed with you. Bless you. Portia, uh-huh. Could you, uh, one moment? Oh, yes. Excuse me, dear. Hurry back now. I will. Stop. Get me a cab, please. What is it, Jen? There's a girl in a tough jam. Shot a guy. Murder if he doesn't live. Hmm. Not tonight. Listen, Portia, she's only a kid, a stranger, helpless, framed on a moral charge to get her sent out of the country. You can't let her down just because you found yourself a bit of happiness. All right, Jen. I'll ask Richard to wait here. Which one of you two was so quick on the trigger? Poor kid, she ain't got a friend in this country. She's from England. Police been notified yet? Yeah, the doctor's going to do it. How's the man doing? <laughs> Don't take it so hard, dearie. We know you didn't mean it. How did you get into this? Oh, I got me a little nest on this floor. Well, don't do any shooting, whatever you do. Don't worry. I'll let them blow their own brains out, the muslins. Mm. You've nothing to worry about. You've only killed a man. Oh, I had it coming. What do you think of a guy that brings a little kid all the way over from England? And when he gets tired of her, tips the Ellis Island bulls off to the porter like a convict. That's a new low. I'll just take a look around. Listen, child, there's one thing we must insist upon. You'll give one answer to all questions, and that is, I don't remember. That legal loophole was invented for the richest man in the world. Don't be afraid to crawl through it. Don't forget, you don't remember a thing, see? I don't want to live. Mother's address? 24 Hollybrook Lane, London East Jane. The man is Earl Condon. Here's your prisoner, Mr. District Attorney. Miss Manners? She doesn't know how it happened. That's what you told me, dearie. That'll be enough out of you. Says you. I'm a witness. The child's mind went blank. I see. Isn't that the way the defense is usually framed by ambulance chasers? There's no need to moralize. I'm not going to take the case. You can't desert that girl just because Earl Common got what was coming to him. I'll never be able to bring myself to take that case. Richard would hate me, and rightly. I've only just found him. Old man Common's handpicked prosecutor will protect your son's family honor by frying that little thing on both sides. Oh, don't, Jane. You're inhuman. But not maudlin. Stop it. I can't take any more right now. How'll I ever be able to tell Richard? Well, you can't help that. But you can't help that girl. I'm afraid my decision is irrevocable. I cannot possibly undertake to defend your daughter. Then I... I have failed. If you'll just step into my office, Mrs. Manners. Just 
sit down and wait. Thank you. So blood is thicker than justice, huh? Oh, get out. Dan Foster couldn't make you quit, and you're in love with him. I asked you to... But you'd let that little girl die just to keep the so-called love of your gentleman's son. Oh, come down off the barricades, Jane. I'm not the only lawyer left in the world. For Elizabeth Manners, you are. Oh, nonsense. Listen, Merriman, you're hiding out in a fool's paradise. You think you've got the love of that boy. You haven't. All you have are a few hours of stolen happiness based on hypocrisy and evasion. Why, every time you see him, and you won't be able to resist seeing him, You'll be scared stiff for fear he'll ask you what happened 17 years ago. The only way for you to escape from the hell you've been living in all these years is to defend Elizabeth Manners and shoot the works. The works, Portia, on the most magnificent gamble in your life. Remember what old man Condon pulled on you. This is the chance you've been waiting for, and you're blind to it. Elizabeth Manners won't be on trial. Portia Merriman will be on trial. There, but for the grace of God, stands Portia Merriman charged with the same murder. 17 years ago. Tell Mrs. Manners to come in. Miss Merriman, please. Have you an appointment? Tell her it's John Condon. Miss Merriman, Mr. John Condon to see you. Sorry. Miss Merriman says she'll be busy all afternoon. Thank you. I assure you this intrusion is warranted, Miss Reynolds. Evidently. You're quite determined to go through with the defense of Miss Manners? Quite. You're quite ready to bring disgrace upon your son's name and unhappiness to him? I've thought it all out, Mr. Condon. And decided that your hatred of me is greater than your love for Richard, is that it? On the contrary. I've decided to stake my love for Richard against your hatred of me. I'm determined to shield the memory of my son. So I'll talk to you in a language we both understand. Name your price. I'll pay anything within reason. For your withdrawal as that manner's woman's counsel. Name my price. Nothing you could possibly offer would persuade me to withdraw from her defense. Is that clear? Perfectly. You leave me no alternative other than to have you disbarred from the practice of law. I had to bring Condon's evidence against you to the Bar Association. My oath of office forced me to do it. Oh, I understand, Dan. Do you think I'd ever heard that against you? But they're giving you an out. Why aren't you taking advantage of it? I must defend that girl. But you won't be able to. They'll disbar you on your own affidavits. They're a sworn confession. Miss Merriman, your case has been called. These affidavits, Miss Merriman, are shockingly conclusive. You obtained your license to practice law through fraud. However, the district attorney has prevailed upon us to accept your resignation as sufficient punishment. I will not resign. These steamroller proceedings have only one purpose, to keep me from defending Elizabeth Manners. Miss Merriman, you must realize that you will be immediately disbarred if we are compelled to continue with the hearing. Sorry, but it won't be done today, because John Condon's affidavits are herewith subpoenaed as evidence in the Elizabeth Manners case. Merriman. I'll face the consequences after the Manners trial. Are you ready, Mr. Foster? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor. Gentlemen of the jury, the state will be brief. Four witnesses will present the plain facts of murder in the first degree. We have before us a very simple proposition. Did Elizabeth Manners with due premeditation kill Earl Condon? True, he was her lover. Much will be made of that by the brilliant attorney for the defense. The dead man will be vilified. The living killer will be glorified. The unwritten law will be invoked. The defense will play upon your heartstrings. They'll pull the sob stuff for all it's worth. The state
state will appeal only to your judgment. The kind of sin out of which this crime arose is never one-sided. You must decide whether women shall share equal responsibility with men for their moral behavior. You must decide whether women have the right to ask for equal rights in everything else and a special dispensation to commit cold-blooded murder. That, gentlemen of the jury, is the only proposition before you. I will call my first witness, Richard Condon. Richard Condon. Your Honor, I wish to know the purpose of this witness's testimony. If the court pleases. The witness is to establish the corpus delicti. On the night of the murder, the grandfather was prostrated and the son was taken by the police to identify the deceased. The defense stipulates that the deceased was Earl Condon. The witness's testimony is unnecessary. The state accepts the stipulation. You may step down. Call Inspector Collins. Inspector it's going to be a circus. Leave it to Merriman. She Inspector always gets Collins. away with murder. Inspector Collins, did you find that document in Elizabeth Manor's apartment? Yes. Did she identify the signature? She said it was Earl Condon. Did you discuss its contents with the defendant? Yes. I said, uh, this man's left you everything in his will. What do you want to kill him for? Did she reply? Yes. She said, I've done a terrible wrong. I've killed my dearest friend. Doesn't counsel for the defense wish to object to the admission of this document? No objection, Your Honor. May I ask the court for a five-minute recess? Yes, I think it'd be very advisable. Miss Merriman, will you come to my chambers, please? Court will recess for five minutes. I wonder why she killed him if he was such a nice guy. Well, haven't you, you ever, ever lost, lost your temper? If the court approves, the state will accept a plea of murder in the second degree. Now, because of the prisoner's youth, I will allow it. You can't let the case go to the jury. The evidence of first degree murder is overwhelming. You're gambling with that girl's life. I'm not so sure. But unless you introduce some evidence to contravene the testimony so far, I'd have to charge the jury there's every premeditation and no justification. The state is being very merciful. I will submit your offer to my client. Are you quite sure, my dear, you know what is at stake? I'd rather die than spend my life in prison. The defense is ready, Your Honor. My first witness is Elizabeth Manners. Ms. Manners, do you recall your conversation with Earl Condon several nights before he died? Earl had been home to dine with his father and son. Yes. He returned and found me crying. And he was tender and considerate? Yes, very. I never saw Portia Merriman make such a cockeyed start of a defense. On that evening, did Earl Condon say anything about marriage? Yes. He'd often said he was going to marry me. But he was afraid how his father would take it. So I told him I'd go back to England and wait for him there. What did he say to that? He said it wouldn't be necessary. But he'd speak to his father in the morning about our marriage. And in the morning? Police came. What kind of police? Immigration officers. Did the officers say why they were arresting you? They said I was an alien charged with moral turpitude. Because of my baby. And the baby? She died four months ago in England. Where did the officers take you when they arrested you? Ellis Island. Please describe for the jury what it was like there. A big cage with a lot of smaller ones inside it. There were all kinds of women to be sent back like me. Laughing, screaming, cursing. Some were insane. 
Others have just come out of prison. They put me in the cage with the moral cases. It was horrible. I went mad. I could hear myself screaming like the others. That was his promise to speak to his father. That was my wedding ceremony. Your witness, Mr. District Attorney. Are you able to proceed, Miss Manners? Will you tell the jury how you contrived your escape? I don't remember exactly. But I could hear voices telling me what to do. To take the visitor's part. They said, you look so stylish, you can make it. I don't remember walking or anything, just voices. Did you go immediately to the apartment? I don't think so. I didn't get there till late at night. I wanted to kill myself. If Earl could do that to me, there was nothing to live for. Instead, you telephoned Earl and asked him to meet you at the apartment so that you might kill him? Wait before you answer. Miss Madison, don't you wish to object to the form of the question? No objection, Your Honor. Yes. I called him up to kill him. Ms. Merriman, please step to the bench. Shouldn't you avail yourself of the district attorney's offer before it's too late? No, Your Honor. Deliberate, premeditated murder. Well, it's on your conscience. Your hunch was right. Good work, Jane. Keep going. Keep going? My uh, <clears throat> ears are dragging now. What's going on, Quinn? I will now call my only other witness. John Condon. John Condon? John Condon. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Sit down, please. You are the father of Earl Condon? Yes. You are also the grandfather of the boy who was called as the first witness, Richard Condon? Yes. Can you tell us who is the mother of Richard Condon? Object, Your Honor. The question is immaterial and irrelevant. Absolutely futile. Ms. Merriman, what possible bearing has the maternity of the dead man's son on this case? I am laying the foundation for the defense. Justifiable homicide. Upon its relevancy depends Elizabeth Manor's life. Very well. Proceed. Will the court order John Condon to reply? I refuse to answer. Will the court instruct the powerful John Condon that even he will remain in jail until he does answer? It will remain a secret. I move that the court commit John Condon for contempt and, pending his willingness to answer, admit my client to bail. I will act on the motion unless you answer. Read the question. Can you tell us who is the mother of Richard Condon? Yes. Who is Richard Condon's mother? His mother is a certain Paula Reynolds. Is she here in this court? Yes. She's the woman who's masquerading as Portia Merriman. <laughs> 
Order in the court. Order. Order. Order in the court. Come to order. Did Earl Condon want to marry Paula Reynolds? That has nothing to do with this case. Why doesn't the district attorney object? The state will object at the proper time. If these questions prove immaterial, they'll be stricken from the records. But you won't be able to strike them from the newspapers. You're trying the patience of the court, Mr. Condon. Read the question. Did Earl Condon want to marry Paula Reynolds? I don't remember. But you do remember that you're under oath. I'll rephrase the question. Your son was under legal age, and you wouldn't consent to the marriage. Is that true? Yes. So Paula Reynolds brought you her baby to plead with you to give him a name. Yes. Was Paula Reynolds armed? Yes. You discovered that fact when Earl stepped unexpectedly into the room, didn't you? Yes. She would have shot him then if you hadn't stopped her by consenting to the marriage. But a marriage according to your terms. Immediate annulment and the baby absolutely yours to bring up. Yes. Now you've come to love that boy very much. He means more to you than all your great and wonderful possessions. He's your pride and joy, the comfort of your old age. Isn't that true, John Condon? Yes. Miss Madeline, you will have to show the relevancy of all this or it shall be stricken from the records. I wish to show that this time John Condon succeeded in getting his son killed. But you will have to relate it directly to the present issue. I will. John Condon, when you agreed to take the baby, did you exact affidavits from Paula Reynolds, alias Portia Merriman? Did you? Did you? Did you make her swear under oath that she was a criminal and worse? Did you get her to blacken herself to the point of obliterating her claims to motherhood in any court so as to guarantee you she could never come into her child's life again? Answer, John Condon. Are these the affidavits you made a young girl sign as the price of a name for her child? For your grandson, my boy, will you answer for his sake? Are these the affidavits? Yes. Didn't the same thing happen this time? Didn't you report Elizabeth Manners to the immigration authorities, causing her mind to become inflamed and unbalanced, leading her to kill your son, whom she loved and who wanted to marry her, a marriage you again sought to prevent? If and when I have an answer to that question, I will have established our defense. Justifiable homicide. Gentlemen, I took this case. Because there, but for the grace of God, sit I, facing a verdict of life or death, 17 years ago. We must have your answer, Mr. Condon. I take full responsibility for what has happened. Counsel for the defense has established relevancy to the complete satisfaction of the state. The moral guilt for this crime clearly rests on the shoulders of John Condon. Therefore, the state will not cross-examine, but will rest its case. I move the court that the jury be polled. Gentlemen, what is your verdict? You will answer in the order of your seats, beginning with the foreman. Not guilty. 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 Not guil